Welcome back to Rogue Legacy with Brian. And who do we got here? Uh, Lady Shinoa. So we have the Paladin, who has ADHD and moves fast. The One, which I still don't know what that's all about. And my same kind of runes and different things. All right. And it looks like I've already spent all of my money here. And so we are ready to go and enter the castle. I've got a Chakram, which is going to hit pretty hard. And at this point, I think we're still mostly trying to get through the castle. And find some blueprints. And with this character... Hmm. <gasps> I figured out what the one means. Everything looks all crazy and matrixy. This is new to me. This must be something that they added in the January patch update, I imagine. Because I had never seen this before. Um, wow, this is crazy looking. Ah, I want to kill you. There we go. Alright, the colors will definitely be take a little bit of getting used to. Wow, I wonder what the other areas look like. Oh, crap, 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 crap. <laughs> Alright, let's quit wondering about the other areas and focus on the task at hand, which is staying alive. I have to remember I have the chakram, because I, oh, darn it. I always forget to use my spells. I didn't warm up at all, and so I haven't played this game again in a few days. I'm trying to get a little bit more recording done. I'm leaving to go away on my trip tomorrow at the time that I'm recording this. And, yeah. Just trying to get, oh my goodness, as much content prepared as I can. Because between... Yikes. All right, let's... Oh, I don't want that spike ball, though. Okay. Let's try... Yeah, let's go over here and try to isolate enemies one at a time. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> I hit you with the sword because you were bad. All right, there we go. We're doing much better now. All right, and you are a little scout and we can kill you. Great. Okay, and I guess let's go ahead and finish up this room since we've made so much progress in it already. Yeah, and so I had a little bit of extra time today, and I was like, why not record another episode of Rogue Legacy? Because I was just watching some of the other Rogue Legacy that I had edited, and it was looking fun to me, and I was like, let's play a little bit more of that before I go. Oh! Ouch, 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 ouch! No! Oh my gosh, I'm so low on health. And, alright, I really need to use my spell. And, let's see. Gosh, it really is... Okay, so you notice the ground here is a darker color. It's mostly because I know this room layout, uh, that I know that there's a secret in here. And this might be a good one. It is! Blood Cape! Oh, that is fantastic. That's gonna help us a ton, and so we will see when this character dies uh, exactly what that can do for us. That's gonna help a lot of our characters be longer lived, I expect. Oh, alright. And so I still need to remember to use my spell sometime. Okay, that's going to be a bad room to try to get into. I might be able to, yeah, do that and use the spell right at the beginning. Okay, that's good. This guy is standing on, like, some spike traps and different things. Let's try going a different way. Let's go back up here and go out the other way and try not to get hit by any of those spikes along the way. Because it didn't look like I was going to have much success in that one room. And, oh boy. Alright, definitely gotta use the spell some in order to help stay alive. Oh, crap. No! Whoa! No! Yikes! Alright, still staying alive, still staying alive. Alright, that's right. Shoot those into the ground, but they can't hurt me. Alright, I have like one hit left here. Yeah, I am pretty out of practice. Surprisingly, maybe unsurprisingly, I didn't think this game, when I played it in the past, I didn't feel like it took kind of as much time to warm up with. And also the combination of uh, having played, when you play this and you play Spelunky, like I'm using the same controller for these two games, and they have a number of the same buttons. I actually, oh, <laughs> Matt, some of my Spelunky buttons. Oh man, all right, I'm still alive, which is kind of amazing. Oh boy, okay, that's a mini boss. We are not going to be able to take him down, uh, which is too bad because we would have gotten some great loot. Fairy chest taking no damage. Can I do this? Let's take a careful look. Oh, you have to fall very carefully down through those spikes. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that. And so I'm going to take my chances somewhere else. 
such as this room. Okay, let's see. I just want to see where that guy was. I might be able to hit him with a chakram twice. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Or even just once, apparently, was enough to kill him. And that's just going to bounce straight across. There's some spike traps here on the floor. So let's either not step on them or move very quickly so they don't get us. Let's take this guy out before this guy starts shooting at me. Oop, 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 oop. And here comes the Sharite as well. And so let's get him before this guy arrives. And this guy... Oh, darn it. Walked right into it. All right. Well, that wasn't completely awful for my first character. Let's hope I get a little bit more warmed up. Okay, a spell thief. Oops. I accidentally switched windows. The way I'm holding the controller, I still have the keyboard right in front of here, and sometimes the wire kind of gets caught on it. Okay, a miner would be a new character, which wouldn't be bad. But I really think I want to show off the spell thief. And so, this guy has a dagger. Uh, as it said in the description, hits enemies to restore mana. And now I have 350. I don't think that's enough to unlock the blood cape, actually. Which is a good item, because it gives us vampirism. Yeah, cost 500 to unlock. We didn't get enough money that run. Oops. And so with my 350, I'm also not sure... Yeah, I don't have enough to uh, upgrade the spell thief into a spell sword, which is something else I would like to do. And so with the little money that I do have, let's see. Health up would definitely help. Yeah, let's spend it on health up. And, all right, we'll check this guy out. So basically, uh, he's kind of like a normal kind of fighter character, but each time he hits a guy, he gets a little bit of mana back, which means you can use your spells much more frequently. Uh, and so that's a nice power to have. And so, let's go ahead and re-enter the castle. And see just how the spell thief does. All right, and this guy is... I think the other guy had ADHD or something. This guy is not quite as fast. So it's moving a bit more slowly. I don't like this room uh, because I don't like any room that contains these fireball kind of traps. Honestly, this one is not that hard, but just in general, I tend to be very good at screwing them up. I guess I'll get that coin. All right, and this is just an empty room. Boring. All right, zombie. And I guess I should show off using the spell and also to get in the practice of using it. So we'll try to do that shortly. Uh, that painting is going to come to life. Uh, all right. And so let's kind of get in a good spot here. And I will go wham. And then... Oh, crap. Darn it. There we go. Use the spell. Great. And we already got the money out of that chest. Interesting castle layout. It's kind of just gone in this one direction. It's the only way I can go. And so as I hit this guy, you'll notice it says 6 MP when he dies. And so basically, everybody I kill, I'm going to get some MP back. And so my MP is all the way back up to 52 of 52. And so I can use it somewhat freely. Yeah, my magic points. I guess I just got a, um, a little magic potion that also refills a bunch of your mana. But basically, anytime I feel the need to use my little dagger spell, I should. Because I will be getting my mana back pretty quickly. All right, and finally, this room branches out in a bunch of different directions and has a lot of furniture in it that I will break for the various monies and things. And let's try going left. All right, look at that. Using my spell to my advantage already. Take that, Blazelock. And if that guy is shooting over there, he must be over there somewhere, right? Looks like I missed him. How about there? There we go, guard box. He's dead. All right, and... I've already got, oop, 34 and 52 mana, and now I'm back up to 46 mana, and so if I kill one more guy, yep, all of my mana's back. Okay, so this is great. You can see why I like this class so much, because basically it gives you a whole lot more freedom to use your spells, and he's still kind of like decent with the sword as well. Um, and so, and then when you upgrade this guy, I guess we'll hopefully find out about that possibly a little bit later in this episode, assuming I do decently. Uh, and then you can see what the advantages of that are as well. Let's go ahead and finish you off like that and then see if I can hit you. No. There we go. Great. All right. These frosted guys aren't so bad, especially when I get them one-on-one. -on -one. And let's see. You're a gray knight, and so I just need to... Nice. Whoa! Crap. Ah. All right. All right. And then... You... Uh, th 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 Alright, you guys, I find a little bit harder to dodge. 
but we've got good spells. All right, I used up a lot of my mana there, so I need to make sure I kill some more guys with my sword to refresh it. That should not be a problem. Yep. Oh, crap. Darn it. All right, there's one. The zombie should be... Oh. I'm going to say the zombie should be easy to take out, and then what do I do? I walk right into him. All right, I need to dodge that. There we go. All right, guard, guard box. We're also easy to hit. In between shots. Crap, crap. All right, didn't realize this guy was coming. Let's bring him way down here, kind of away from everybody else. Hey, come down here. There we go. And when you swing the sword, it also makes this kind of do 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 noise that sounds cool. Okay, so, okay, let's see. What is the best strategy? If you're attacking the other side of this room, first of all, it involves not getting hit at the beginning. I'm going to avoid it because that looks kind of difficult to me. And instead, I will try going up here and see what we have up here. This room doesn't look bad. There's a painting on the wall that's going to come to life. Another Doomvis. All right, did a good job there. And let's finish him off with that. Great, still a little bit low on mana, and so I need to try to melee a few more guys with my spell sword. And is this painting coming to life as well? Yes, I see it shaking. All right, that's right, come over here. Ooh, nice. Yes, okay, great. And that painting's gonna come to life too. Let's get right here, yeah, that'll be good. All right. Woo! I find that I do best against those paintings if I really kind of kite them around the room so that I can, like, see them coming and figure out exactly how their arc's gonna go. Uh, when I kind of let them get into close quarters, that's when I get into trouble. There we go. Great. And, yeah, still very low on health. Really need to get that blood cape. I guess I can go ahead and talk about that now. There's various blood gear. So we've reached one of the teleporter rooms, which means if I go up here, I would be entering the the Maya, the tower. And I don't really want to go there, because that'll be too difficult for me right now. And so let's take a look at the map. Let's go back a couple rooms. I guess I can go down and right. Let's go over there. Oh, except for that was the room that I was having a hard time getting up and over and back across. So in that case, let's go back to a couple of the other rooms over here. So the Blood Cape, there's various blood uh, gears that give you a vampire, uh, what's it called? Vampirism. And with vampirism, as you might be able to guess from the name, basically when you kill enemies, you steal some of their life force. So basically, aha, here's the boss room. When you kill enemies, you steal some of their life force. Hey! Night Bracers. I think those might be good. I think they might be better than anything I have right now. And can this character take on the boss? Not without max health anyway. And even then it would be tough. He's got a shot though, but let's continue fighting around the castle and see if we can find some more chicken legs to get our health up. But basically, once you have some runes with vampirism... Oh, this is fun. I don't think we've seen this before. Carnival, hit the targets. You only get one shot, but it's free of charge. You only get one chance to try to destroy all these targets, basically, but you get ten daggers to do it with. And so the idea is... Oh, I missed. All right, and it bounces back up and down, and I missed exactly the same way. All right, so I'm not very good at this, but maybe I'll get a little better as I get warmed up. Unfortunately, the targets start moving faster and faster. Oh, too high. Still too high. There we go. And so, if you manage to hit all of the targets, eight with your ten shots or whatever, you get some kind of big bonus. I don't even remember what it is. I'm not sure I've ever completed this, actually. <laughs> Alright, I'm definitely not going to complete this, and so I'm just going to kind of quickly take some shots. You do get a little bit of gold, and so it's worth trying, even after you know you're not going to be able to hit. <laughs> he says, you couldn't even hit eight? Good luck with the rest of the castle. Thanks a lot, you crazy carnival dude. All right, and so I guess I'm, I am almost certainly going to die to this boss, but we've already made a fair amount of money, and it looks like it's going to be hard to get to other rooms of the cat. Actually, let's try going down really quick. That's one way I haven't gone. I was just going to show off the boss and then die to him, but before I do, there's one other direction that I can get to easily. Defeat all enemies. Oh, this room is actually not all that bad from what I recall. Oop. And so, especially with this spell... Uh, if I can take out some of those scouts at range with my dagger. Yeah, let's try that. So 
so I need to just do that. Great, that guy hit him. Yep, he's gone. And he's gone. All right, there's another one right there. Let's jump over this. I think he's right there. Great. Okay, so far so good. Okay, and there's a bunch more scouts. I could use the chicken legs sometime around now. And so what height were those other guys at? Were they at the same height or yes? Okay, that guy is, so we take him out. So yeah, fortunately when the enemies go far enough off the screen, they stop shooting at you and become kind of unaware of you, but you can still shoot at them across the room. And so especially if you have spells like uh, Chakram that go through multiple enemies or go through walls or different things, oftentimes in a large horizontal room like this. Nice. You can take out a lot of enemies at once with kind of like a single casted spell. But I'm happy to kind of take my time here. Oh, I'm out of magic. Alright, so now I need to melee some guys. Zoop, dip, dip, dip. Duh. All right, in order to regain some magic, thank goodness I am a spell thief and I have that capability. Okay, we're almost there, we're almost there. And so yeah, so personally, if you're really good at this game, uh, and kind of like good at dodging... All right, we killed everybody. And so, Grace Rune, Sword. Not as good of a rune, and we've got like three runes on the sword now. Uh, and one of them is like the sprint rune or whatever that I don't want to give up and so I don't know if that's actually going to be a useful rune for me, given what else I have. Uh, for those of you who don't recall, you get various runes but they're attached to a piece of equipment and you can only have one rune attached to each piece of equipment. And so I have a bunch of choices for what to do with the sword but I like my other choices better is basically what I'm saying there. We'll see it when this character dies and we have to go back to the manor and kind of re-equip for our next character. All right. All right, I've managed to get all my mana back, and so I should be using it again. Oops, missed. Oh, missed again. Oh, ow, ow, ow. All right, I desperately need a chicken leg. Somebody give me a chicken leg. I demand chicken. And that's, yeah, the main reason that the vampire cape, or any of the vampire kind of gear, is the thing that I want the most, is basically, as a result, you can slowly be regaining your life as you're fighting guys, just like I'm regaining mana as I'm fighting guys. And for someone who is not completely adept at avoiding damage all of the time, that is a big deal for me. Uh, but these rooms turned out to be pretty profitable. Uh, I'm glad I didn't run into the boss room there, because we managed to get like another 700 gold already. Uh, I suck at these rooms. Uh, but we're going to try it anyway, because I do... I've got a double jump and a sky rune, and so I can get pretty far here if I'm careful. And I already missed that. Okay, there we go. Oh, no! I hit the wrong button! <laughs> and it was also a take no damage room, and I'd already taken damage, and so it was useless to go there. Silly Brian. Alright, let's see. Who's our next guy going to be? Glaucoma is awful it's hard to see anything. A paladin with OCD and a new trait that we haven't seen before. That's not bad. And a miner with eidetic memory, which we also haven't seen before. Uh, either of those would be reasonable. I don't like the paladin spell. I like the miner spell better. And so we're going to choose the miner and we can see what eidetic memory does. All right, but first things first. I desperately want to buy this blood cape. And so the disadvantage, pretty much all of the uh, armor and weapons that appear on the bottom row have some big trade-offs. Uh, in this case, the blood cape, you can see uh, under additional properties in the description, plus one vampirism. And so I'll be getting some health back when I kill guys. But health, uh, minus 30. Basically, uh, it brings down my health, and so I don't have as big of a health pool, and so that's kind of the trade-off of the vampire gear, but I find that usually that works in my favor. Uh, I think the only runes we got, yeah, so I've got all these runes on the sword. I really want to hold on to the sprint rune, and so I'm not going to use the grace rune. And then, sadly, I haven't uh, found other runes to unlock, but we still have a fair bit of money. And so, but sadly, not enough money to upgrade to spell sword. And so instead, let's see. I do have enough for gold gain up, and I'm about to use a miner anyway, and so we can kind of get extra bonus. And so maybe I'll spend a lot of money on that, because we will need a lot of money moving forward. Yeah, let's do that. All right, and I think that's all the money that I can spend. 
And so this miner has eidetic memory, and so we'll check that out. Assuming we still have time today, let me check on the time for this episode. Yeah, I fear this character will not be long-lived, so let's go ahead and do a run-through with the miner and show off his capabilities. So I just bought gold gain up, uh, but I'm also a miner, and so... Alright, that was <laughs> unlucky. All these restoration things happened to be in the first room, and I didn't need any of them at that moment in time. But as a miner, here's a coin. Usually it gives me 10, and here it's giving me 14. Uh, it would have just gone up to 11 uh, as a result of the gold gain up, and then the miner has another 30% bonus. And so we get 14 gold from each coin rather than just 10 gold from each coin after those two things stack. Um, and so that is good for us in terms of being able to earn more money. Uh, oh, and eidetic memory. So if you look on the mini-map, it shows you the location of all enemies, including things like these little bouncy spike balls. And in fact, it is showing me, for example, that this painting is going to come to life because he shows up as an enemy. And sure enough, if I get close to him, uh, he starts wiggling around. And so I guess we'll do... Oh, crap! I hit the wrong button. <laughs> That's the one thing. In uh, Spelunky, there's like a single... Uh, there was another painting in there, but I'm going to ignore it because it's probably just going to take damage again. Like a dummy. Uh, in Spelunky, there is a single button to sprint. Uh, whereas in Rogue Legacy, yikes, uh, you can dash in both directions with... Oh. Yeah, this character's not going to live very long. You can dash in both directions with two different buttons. And so in Spelunky, I only use the right button to sprint all the time. And then so when I switch to this game, sometimes I mean to sprint to the left, but I hit the right button because I'm used to Spelunky. I'm kind of just, I don't know babbling about my own woes, but if you see me go and sprint in the wrong direction right into an enemy, that is usually the kind of background reason why. Alright, and we can't kill those skeletons down there without a different spell. Uh, or at least I don't think we can. Alright, and so I'm gonna run in here, and oh, this is something we haven't seen before. So basically, typically it's the case that you have one spell, in this case I have dagger, and you have it for the whole time. Sometimes you'll find other spells in the castle, and so you can like trade out the spell that you have. And so I can change to Scythe. I'm pretty happy with Dagger right now. Oh, thank goodness for the chicken leg. I need that. I can use some more magic as well. And... Um, what was I saying? So yeah, we could always come back to that room later if we decide we want the Scythe spell. And the forest I'm going to die in, but since this room doesn't have any enemies, I'll go ahead and go through it. But let's see if we can manage to find ourselves... Oh, that's the forest as well. Some easier enemies to deal with. Anywhere, that's the forest as well. It's all forest over here. All right. And yeah, you can see again on the mini map like all the enemies there were in the forest. Uh, but there's somewhere up here that I can go. And so let's hope this is the castle and an easier room. Oh, good. It is the boss room, Blood Sword. Okay. That's something else that'll give me vampirism as well. Uh, but again, with some trade offs. But there's also a chicken leg in here and some more mana in here. Okay, once again, I will have zero chance against this boss. So I'm not going to go against him right now. Oh, here's another bonus. Uh, this will lead up into the Maya, which I am also not ready to go to. I have some more health, and so I guess let's try a little bit of the forest. If I walk in here... Actually, this room isn't bad. Let's see if we can get out of here. All right, and so I'm going to go ahead and try to take out this guy first. And then this blob will break up into smaller blobs after you hit it a couple of times. And then I think those are the smallest size, and then they finally just die. Uh, yeah, he, I think he starts out as a blob, and then he turns into little bloobs, or his name. Okay, this guy rushes at you, and so I want to hit him with a dagger from far away, because otherwise... Oh, crap, he'll do that. I remember to correct, hit the correct sprint button. He'll also jump, uh, and so if he comes leaping at me, I'd be in some trouble. And so I think let's take out uh, the blob guy first. Is blob actually your name? Come over here, you crazy blob. Jump towards me. Come at me! I want to get far enough away from that uh, wolfy dude. Wolfy dude. It's like wolfy. Oh no, he's a bloob. Are they all bloobs? Yeah, the little guy's called a bloob as well. Alright, I was wrong. I thought they had like different names based on their size. Alright, he's probably going to jump at the worst possible time. Nope, I can hit him with my sword from right there. Hooray! Look at this. And despite the fact that we haven't gone through that many rooms, we're already up to 840 gold. Which is not bad. Uh, so that's the advantages of being a miner and also having gold gain up. Oh dear, okay. Uh, that guy, let's... Oops, hit him with a couple of daggers. Crap. Nah. 
All right, uh, 39 hit points right now. This guy's easy to kill. Uh, he's a headless horse, as opposed to a headless horseman. So he can't see anything, so he just runs back and forth wherever he is. Um, so that's pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> All right, there's something firing up there. Well, let's take this guy out first. Okay, there's a chain guy who's swinging his little uh, spike ball around. So let's be careful with him. Okay. Find the right timing to hit him. So, did I not have money to equip the blood cape? Or did I, I thought I'm wearing the blood cape, aren't I? It seems like I'm killing guys and I'm not getting any health back. So I've got 39 out of 80 health right now. And I can kill you on the next go-round, maybe. Oh, it's got too far away. All right, here we go, here we go. Great, killed some guys, and I still only have 39, so what's up with that? Did I not equip the blood cape? Did I not have enough money to buy it? I've completely forgotten what's happened. Where am I? In any case, uh, this is turning into a longer episode, but that's okay, because it means that we're actually staying alive and doing well. Oh, no, 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 no. Yo, there's him jumping. Okay. Yeah, I do not like you. I am going to hit you with that. Uh, Warg, is that his name? He's a Warg? Yeah, okay. That is going to be a room that I will really struggle with, so let's try taking a peek at a few others. Oh, hey, another carnival. Five axes to destroy as many targets as possible. And so I suck at this game. My understanding is there's actually a way to cheat at this game, or at least there was which is that you could actually throw an axe before you entered the room and destroy some of the targets. It's true. Okay, but now I've actually entered the room and now I get just my five axes. I've never actually tried that before. Uh, the kind of like little cheating thing. And yeah, I don't mind. And so you basically have to figure out, you know, how to kind of distribute your axes to hit the most targets. And I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to do it successfully anyway. 86, and I needed to get 90, but I got a little bit of gold. You don't win the prize. Oh, well, I tried. Uh, in any case, we got a little bit more gold out of that. And provided I don't have the spike ball over here, let's do... Oh, dup, 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 dup. All right, so we can use eidetic memory to look on the map and see that there's two guys on the top and four guys on the bottom. They're all going to be aiming at me when I enter the room. And so... I think if I jump up and have them aim high, then I can kind of go down below and kill them. So let's try that. There we go, they aimed high. Oop, one of them didn't aim right at the beginning because I was too far away and he didn't like detect me. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. All right, I'm happy about that. That's one place where eidetic memory really comes in handy, uh, is if you can kind of like stand outside the room and study the locations of the enemies. And that little crazy thing, it's like a piece of furniture that I can break for a bonus. So let's get that. Uh, there's two enemies on the bottom. I can't see who they are. Oh, boy. Chain text. Dup, dup, dup. And, uh, skeleton dude. Mr. Bones. All right. I am going to walk out here just so I can collect that gold. We're down to two hit points, which is not good. Not good at all. But I think I might be able to kill this guy before I die. And so let's give him a shot. Aha! Chain Tour is your name, apparently. And after you kill this guy, his little spiky ball that's on the end of his chain will start flying around the room, unless you kill him while it's inside the ground, in which case it dies. And so I killed him on inside the ground, and it died. Hooray! And when you look at that, I am still alive with this minor character, despite his poor stats. And thanks to all the gold bonuses, I'm making a fair amount of money. So that's good. We will be able to buy some more gear. Ah, die, 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 die. Man, it takes a lot of hits to kill some of these guys in the forest here. Oh, here comes a Fury, I believe is your name. And you're reasonably predictable, but you shoot projectiles at me, which I don't like. Great. Still at two hit points. So yeah, I'm definitely not gaining uh, health back from killing other guys. So I'm kind of curious what's up with that. Can I see on my stat card? Uh, where is that? Equipment, Knight Helm, Knight Chestplate, Squire Bracers. I guess I didn't have enough money to unlock it, and I just completely forgot. All right. So, that's too bad. Otherwise, it would have lasted much longer with this character. Oh! That was just foolish. I jumped right up into it. All right. I think... Uh, let's go ahead and choose an heir and outfit him, since we got a bunch of money, and then next episode we'll start playing that guy. We've got a Savant Barbarian with OCD. That's actually a pretty interesting character. 
Uh, assassin with dyslexia and vertigo, no thank you. Uh, Servant that's an endomorph, that's a pretty good character too. I think the OCD would actually serve me better, because OCD gives you magic points back when you break furniture. And as a savant, I guess we'll find out at the next episode what the savant does, but before I forget, let's go ahead and, so we've got a blood sword, blood cape, I guess I unlocked it, but I couldn't equip it because I don't have enough carrying capacity to wear all the equipment. I see, so that's what I need to do next is basically do allow myself to carry some more weight. And so I didn't notice how much weight I actually need to equip the blood cape. And plus 35, so I need a bit more. But I would like, especially with a barbarian who has a gigantic, uh, I need to get up to, I think I need another one as well. I think that might be enough. The barbarian has a big hit points pool. There we go. Okay, great. And even if I bring him down a number of hit points, he still has 195 hit points. And now he has some vampirism, which means I'll be gaining hit points back. I can't recall... Oh, there was another piece of equipment, actually. There was, like, night bracers or something that I got. Yes, this is new. Night limbs, which would give you more magic, cost more weight. Um, but in general, it's good to try to use all the equipment you can. And so I'm gonna do another equip up. And I'm not sure if that gives me enough that I could actually wear them. And I don't know that I have enough money to buy them and unlock them anyway. Uh, where was that? I think it was this. Yes, 375 to unlock. So I don't have enough to buy that. Is there anything else that I'd wanna buy here? The blood sword, possibly eventually, which does more damage, costs 500 to unlock though. And so I don't think there's anything else I have enough money to purchase. All right, so next episode, we will continue with this guy. We will see what it means to be a savant. Actually, I can show that off right now. So I had an axe. Every time you cast a spell, you get a new random spell in return. And so in the upper left, you can see what your next spell is going to be. Uh, but that's actually pretty cool um, because it means if you find a room that you need a certain spell in, you can always come back later when you might have a different spell. All right. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'll see you again soon with more Rogue Legacy.